Welcome back. You're watching Indian Open right here on Bloomberg Quaint Live Asia. As the pocket is faring okay for today, there is a slight bit of a bounce back that's coming to markets like Japan. Hong Kong too is trading with marginal gains of about six cents of a percent. For the SGX Nifty, we did breach heavily below that 50-day moving average. I think the next 100-day moving average falls far below, I think 11,800 odd. But uh, important to see what we've got in terms of support levels and what options activity is suggesting today. Considering yesterday was the expiry, we're low on positions, not too heavy as we step into the budget as well tomorrow. But Namneet is joining us right now to take us through those details. Namneet, good morning. Good morning to both of you. Well, we are extremely low on uh, positions ahead of the union budget. In fact, uh, uh, the key factors for the January series uh, so far, it, it was basically the global factors which weighed on the series. Though Nifty did touch its all-time high levels of about 12,430 on January 20th. But from there about, we started off with US-Iran tensions. Then, uh, of course, there was uh, positive news coming from the global front phase one deal of US China was signed but then in the in the end you had the coronavirus that spooked market sentiment so the rollovers now are looking very very subdued for nifty as well as the bank nifty futures and uh, also the FI long shot ratio I believe it's the lowest that we've ever seen I'll take you through that data but let me begin with the rollovers first which have been below the three month average that we've seen both in terms of percentage as well as in absolute terms let's just pull up the nifty rollovers then this is by the way the uh, performance for the series gone by. Nifty was down 0.7%. Banking index was down. For the second straight series, the bank Nifty has underperformed. And some respite coming in from heavyweights in fee TCS. IT index was up 4%. And this was the series, I guess, after a few series where the broader markets outperformed. Nifty mid-cap index was up about 8%. And lastly, you had the India weeks, the volatility surged about 50%. Let's begin with the rollovers then. Uh, this is the Nifty rollover in terms of absolute terms. 1.08 crore versus 1.23 crore shares that were there in the December series 66% versus last three month average of 76% tell you telling you that the rollovers have been on the lower side with the banking index which has been underperforming for the last two series here too we are going in light 0.12 shares versus 0.13 in terms of percentage also it's on the lower side at about 62% but the market wide rollovers mind you in absolute terms are looking better and this I believe could be on account of broader markets outperforming there was a lot of actions seen in couple of individual stocks so 406 crore shares versus 391 but in percentage terms, maybe it's coming down. You've got four stocks also coming out of the futures and options space. Uh, Sector-wise, strong role was seen in cement. We've seen stocks like Sri Cement, ACC Ambuja bouncing back. Capital goods fared well and finance too. In terms of weak rollovers, you've got banking index. The private banks, remember, were the laggard because they were the heavyweights, beat HDFC, ICIC, Kotak. All of them were down during the series. Metals and oil and gas also looking weak. On the neutral side, auto, we did see a couple of individual pharma companies doing well. And also on the technology side, I think the rollovers have looked neutral so far. What about the FII stats, Lamneet? Extremely weak. Um, if I look at the data, it definitely looks weak on the index futures. Uh, okay, I think this is uh, not the right data. Uh, okay, yeah, of course. Uh, February series, 17% on the long side. Uh, so far, whenever the series begins, the ratio has been somewhere about 40-60 or 50-60. If you want to look at this data positively, I'll say if there is any surprise which comes in the budget, there is a lot of room for short covering which can come in because FIs are net and extremely on the uh, short side of the position. In fact, net short positions are nearly 77,000 contracts. Index options data, it's usually divided due to weekly options expiry. But uh, to begin with, they've still bought more of puts and they've also uh, written uh, more of puts. And if one one more to watch out for levels. Of course, 12,000 remains very key. There is a lot of open interest or concentration on the 12,000 put strike, even for the weekly and for the monthly expiry. With that, it's back to you guys. Right. Okay. Namini, thanks very much for that. Uh, Amit Kurana, Head of Equities and Research at Dollar Capital, is joining us right now on the show. Amit, good morning to you. Important today, we get the economic survey. Tomorrow is the big budget uh, growth, and that's the big number that everyone's going to be watching out for. But what happens for equity markets is equally important. And ahead of that, you know, let me just highlight positions are extremely light. No one is really wanting to take a call on which direction the market takes. That's right. I guess uh, it's probably a reflection of how the overall sentiment at this stage is. Uh, there is a certain sense amongst the investors that this is a crucial budget and you would expect a far better constructive uh, sort of action plan by the government. Uh, but there is also a fair amount of feeling amongst the investors to play it safe and really take it as to how it comes. Uh, from our perspective, uh, what we're looking for uh, are three, four broader ideas in the budget. 
I think rather than uh, you know talking about longer term statements, the budget really has to lay down a, a framework to execute a few big ticket items. Uh, one will be on the infrastructure side if they can showcase as to how well they would intend to execute some items and that kick starts the growth. Bringing back confidence is probably the most important thing. Uh, I think a kick starting of the infrastructure expenditure will probably play a big role in that. And the second uh, is from the equity market perspective, the government needs to probably sort of indulge with them a little more, bit more this, this time because you have the divestment program which has missed its target and next year big it is big margin, exactly. So next year, equity markets and the broader bond markets will have to be engaged much better, a uh, little pampered by the government as I see it. And therefore, a rationalization of the taxation structure is very high on the expectations from the investor perspective. So uh, now we can keep on debating as to what level of sectoral uh, sort of uh, I know uh, freebies come in, what sort of uh, encouragement comes into play. But I guess uh, we're looking at three, four broader themes. Uh, restructuring of the equity uh, market taxation structure, uh, kickstarting infrastructure spending, mm. and then in, within that real estate uh, boost, and then of course the personal income tax rate cuts which we believe will pos have the potential to restart consumption at the domestic end. Mm -hmm. If you get these levers right, I think broadly we can look at a much better recovery on the GDP and the economy over the next uh, couple of years. The consumption numbers haven't particularly looked great. Uh, uh, the la what have you made of the results of the last two or three names that have come out thus far? See, the Colgates uh, and the Dabbers, for example. Sure. Now, there is a lot of positives and negatives as I would see in the numbers. Now you can paint the picture thing, it, they consistently are declining. Volume growth have been actually at multi-year lows mm. for some of the categories. Having said that, uh, I also look at it in the context that there's a, there's a, a major rationalization of the channel itself. A lot of distributors have actually left the businesses. And therefore, the existing guys will probably gain market share over a period of time. Uh, will it decline further? We don't think so. In fact, uh, as we speak, we are seeing evidence of some sort of rebound already taking place in Q4. Uh, these were very much in the expectations, the Q3, Q3 numbers for, uh, per se. So I'm not really very, uh, shall I say, very pessimistic about it at this stage because it's yeah. all been discounted to an extent. But does it give us a very strong, exciting uh, sort of uh, a stance to go overweight on these counters? We are not at this stage either. I think it will have to be seen category-wise. Uh, and therefore, one has to, again, watch out as to how the domestic consumption comes back. Now, one of the hypotheses that we are trying to work out is a better rural trajectory for mm -hmm. the next uh, four, five quarters. Okay. Because we've seen rural was declining over the last six, seven quarters, consistently declining. Is that bottoming out? And there seems to be some signs of that. But will that show up a reasonable level of recovery? Uh, considering that Rabi is a good crop, uh, you've seen some bit of uh, inflation also building in. Mm -hmm. And if the government can showcase some bit of a support, I think that will take off. Urban is entirely a different take. Urban yeah. categories yeah. have taken a bigger hit. So it's very, very category-wise. But yes, uh, numbers have not been very great. I would say it's more been neutral kind of a, a zone at an aggregate level. But that was sort of ex expected as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, beyond budget, uh, there is uh, news as well. And our, um, we want Amit's view on that too. But the RBI has, remember, agreed to a new time frame for Uday Kotak to reduce stake gradually in Kotak Bank while also capping his voting rights. Ravikant but Banking analyst at India Nivesh for a quick perspective about the implications. Ravikant, what do you expect uh, the stock to do? What would you tell your clients today? No, so uh, I think the stock should do well, although I mean it's very uh, uh, richly valued already at 4.4x, you know, uh, 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 the banking business I'm talking specifically about. But this whole stake dilution itself had been for a long time a major overhang. Uh, and, and how exactly would it happen had, had been a you know, big question mark. Uh, now that it's gone away, I think uh, the stock should uh, should there should at least be some kind of a relief uh, a rally in the stock. Uh, obviously, I mean the second question is uh, given the market cap or even a four percent dilution entails almost 1.7 1.8 billion kind of uh, offloading which uh, the promoter has to do within the next six months. And uh, my hunch is again uh, possibly there are investors waiting to pick up uh, a four percent stake in uh, Kotak Bank. So uh, net net, I think this is uh, this is a big positive for, from a valuation perspective. Possibly uh, it's 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 uh, already trading very rich at very rich levels, but the stock should nevertheless the market should nevertheless give a thumbs up. Ravikant, uh, you know one final question is that uh, um, the RBI has been a bit easy on Kotak Bank. Uh, 
you feel that that could be the case and other banks that are required to bring down promoter shareholding uh, could probably want the same kind of treatment or the conditions under which the licenses were given to Kotak Mahindra Bank versus the others uh, are completely different. It's, it, it's uh, almost a case by case. Yeah, I feel it's the latter. I mean, and in that sense, I think it's a no-brainer. So uh, while, uh, you know, so, so there has been this discussion about RBI being a bit easy on Kotak, uh, Kotak Bank. But uh, I mean, going back to the era when when the licenses were, each, were issued, I think the argument, uh, if if Kotak Bank were to make the argument that they have run the bank more efficiently and thereby requiring a lesser promoter dilution compared to one other bank which was given the license around the same time, I think that 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 indeed is a fair argument. So I think this is a golden mean which which both have you know arrived at. And as far as other banks are concerned, I think it's 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 been very explicit and in black and white uh, as far as the license terms are concerned. So I don't think the same argument, which ha the argument which has been made for Kotak uh, to retain his uh, stake at 26% and, you know, gradual dilution as and when it happens, uh, is, is applicable uh, to, to the banks who have been given licenses under the current uh, licensing regime. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think Karibe is being with easy, uh, easy on Kotak. Okay. Ravikant, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining us uh, this morning with those thoughts. So a case-by-case -case basis, but nonetheless, an overhang for Kotak Mahindra Bank out of the way, but it's a richly valued stock nonetheless. And also the numbers this time around uh, weren't all that great. Uh, Amit, your take on Kotak? Well, uh, not very different. Uh, I think uh, it's the best case scenario result that you could imagine. I mean, uh, we were actually wondering when this whole issue got into the courts. I mean, this could have been done at that stage as well. But obviously, you know, you have to somewhere, you know, let the things worsen a little bit before they get any better. So I guess both of the entities have made their points and reached the truth. It's good for the banking sector, good for the regulator that they're out of the uh, court. And uh, uh, from a bank perspective, uh, so while the valuations are quite rich, uh, they are at a significant premium. Uh, our take is slightly different. I would see that uh, in a different context that quota could actually outperform for this year. And the argument we are building on is you have a significant transition happening in the other large private sector bank, which is HDFC. Mm. Now, we have seen some bit of off and on selling action here and there. Could that be an overhang on HDFC for the next couple of quarters? And in that case, the only bank which is extremely well positioned uh, is Kotak. Now, if you go through the fine print on the numbers, and this has been very clearly discussed on the call, uh, they are paying a much higher savings rate interest. So the operating leverage is still tremendous for their names to sustain and actually move up. HDFC Bank, you mean? Kotak Bank. Mm. Uh, they are still paying a higher rate of interest on the savings account deposit, and yet they are garnering market shares. So structurally, in terms of positioning, uh, their franchise, I think they're in a very, very great position. But I think the loan growth and the deposit growth was the issue this time. Precisely, and that's a conscious decision. If you go through the last couple of quarters call also, it's been a very conscious stance by the uh, management to slow it down deliberately. Some of the categories, they have been deliberately pulling out. Mm. So the risk management has been, has been absolutely top of class. Uh, the operating leverage has been very well managed and you still have a headroom there. Uh, so I would probably take a slightly different approach to this, that while valuations look rich, but if you are looking at the next four or five quarters, uh, are you seeing other banks having a bit of a hangover, and therefore, could this be an outperformer? Okay. Uh, stay on with us, Amit. Lots more to talk to you about, but also important to get in a sense of what are the earnings that are expected today. There are a few large ones that are coming out today. We've got SPI, we've got HUL, ITC, Vedanta. All of these numbers are going to be important from uh, probably getting a directional standpoint for the market as well. SBI in particular, uh, you know, tends to be that big driver. But uh, uh, our team is here with us, Agam, Darshan. Um, let's start off with you, Darshan, on uh, what we're expecting. Yeah, so SBI will report numbers today. It'll be very important to see what it does because most of the private sector banks have disappointed. Uh, so we're seeing NII up 6%. Uh, we are seeing uh, PPOP up 38%. Uh, and profit will be up 30%. Now, uh, remember, you know, a lot of these cases got cleared this time around. There was uh, uh, SR Steel, Ruchi Soya, uh, Prayag Raj. All these came uh, were, were recovered, and a lot of recoveries will be seen this time around. But slippages also probably will be much higher, given the fact that Devan Housing uh, probably may slip this time around. So uh, the Investec note does indicate that there 
will be close to 12,000 crores of slippages that will come in uh, versus 9,100 crores that was seen last time around. Uh, because and again, it's a seasonal quarter in which slippages are also higher, so that is another factor. Uh, credit cost this time around is expected to be slightly lower at 2.5% versus 2.7%. Loan growth will be 10.5%, and we've seen some of the private sector banks, uh, even the top-notch private sector banks, uh, do close to 10%. So probably it might be slightly difficult for that front. Uh, and this will be led by the retail segment this time. Deposit growth is seen at 8%. NIMS are seen at 2.9% versus 2.9%. So not too much change. Uh, we'll watch out from the SMA 1 and 2 numbers. So that is important. Management commentary becomes very, very important for SBI uh, in what they're seeing as far as the asset quality is concerned. All right, Larshan, thanks a lot for that. Uh, ITC and HUL. Okay. Sure. Well, uh, it's not going to be a very strong quarter. We already know it's as per indications of the companies which came out with earnings yesterday. Of course, also with the expectations. I'm going to start off with the HUL. Uh, on a standalone basis, net sales likely to rise 5%. EBITDA margins likely to see about 90 basis points expansion to 22.3%. Net profits likely to rise around 10.5%. Volumes growth seen at around 3 to 4%. And, uh, well, of course, the rural growth has further decelerated according to a lot of analysts out there. There's also suggestion that there is an expectation of a little bit of an improvement in liquidity, but that may not actually put sales uh, higher up by, by quite a bit. We do expect home care to remain strong. Food and beverages segment may see a mixed quarter, and personal care is likely to be slack. And coming down to ITC, again, it could be just a tad stronger in terms of uh, growth as compared to HUL, where ITC is expected to see a growth of around 6%. Again, EBITDA margin is likely to expand by around 100 basis points and net profit likely to rise around 21 percent. Uh, cigarette volumes, they do not report cigarette volumes, but there are all sorts of estimates out there that stand around 2 to 3 percent in terms of growth. FMCG business likely to see 6 percent growth. And of course, this is the operational profitability that we're going to keep an eye on, uh, along with uh, several other factors like paper business, agricultural business, as well as the hotels business. But on the whole, uh, we're not expecting any fireworks from either of these companies. All right, guys, thanks very much for that. So watch out for all of those names in trade today. Amit, I want to come to you on SBI and uh, the, the behemoth of the PSU space. The, the, con the commentary from the management in the last quarter itself was extremely optimistic. You've got a slew of recoveries that will you know, uh, show up in this quarter. Do you feel that it's time to seriously have a look at allocating some money to SBI? Well, yeah, that's been one of our only PSU banks that we've backed up for the last so many quarters. But I think the concern here is the deterioration that we've seen on some of the accounts, DHFL being one. And our estimates actually incorporate a provisioning on that. And therefore, uh, while I look at the numbers now, I guess the consensus has also sort of caught up with that, that assumption. When we put out the numbers, we were lower than the consensus, assuming that they will provide for DHFL as an account. So I guess it's now in the consensus, and if that were to be the case, I guess it's, it's in line. Uh, but more important, I think the uh, commentary from the management should probably put out a relatively better uh, credit growth uh, scenario for the next year or so. And that is the lead signal I would watch out for from SBI. Remember, it's one of the banks which we have seen in our channel checks actually beginning to start lending to the SMEs. And if that is uh, something which is corroborated by the management and seems to be sustaining, I think that, that that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other one is the biggie Tata Motors and the numbers thereof. Now, I thought nothing special, uh, but uh, well, uh, the net profit numbers do look okay. The question is, Amit, that with the whole scare of coronavirus hanging over some of these global businesses, until that is passed, do you think there could be some meaningful buying in Tata Motors, even if they spring a surprise or two? Well, there could be, but we haven't seen evidence of that. And I think this uh, this overhang will probably go a little bit more. Uh, Maybe we're probably closer to the peak, but I, I guess from a sentiment perspective, this might linger on for some time. And therefore, I'm not sure whether you will see an immediate support coming in or not. Mm -hmm. uh, probably I would reserve my judgment on that because with the, I mean, one thought that we probably peaked out two days back, but the numbers seem to be rising on the you know the incidents and uh, death cases and you know general sentiment on the on the uh, the look and the feel of overall whether the. Uh, demand in, is going to come back in China as an economy or not. I guess this is probably going to take a little longer, and therefore I'd probably sort of stay back. But the domestic-oriented uh, auto businesses seem to be selectively doing well. Escorts are case in point, isn't it? Some stellar numbers in commentary. 
That's true, but then for Tata Motors, really, it's it's, it's a very no, smaller part. Uh, so let, let's leave, leave let's leave Tata Motors out. Sure. Well, I'm talking about the others. What yeah. do you think there? So Escorts and Mahindra will be bigger beneficiaries because seeing a better environment for their businesses. Mm -hmm. So this is not a call on the overall CVs per se, but uh, we would prefer playing the tractors because, by the way, we're seeing much better, at least initial trends on tractors now. Hmm. Uh, and both escorts and Mahindra get a benefit of that. And escorts, of course, the, on the other, uh, the industrial part, which they are they're supplying infrastructure, equipment, and all, it seems to be doing relatively better. And that's been the big driver of their earnings. Uh, so I would sense that will continue to be the theme, uh, rather than the core auto uh, sort of a, a play there. What has really caught your eye so far this earnings season? Any company that you know you weren't expecting much from, but has really delivered? or a company that we were hoping would deliver a good set of numbers is completely disappointed? Well, there have not been very, very uh, significant outliers. I mean, yeah. if you look at our upgrades to downgrades ratio, which we track actively, it's, it's, I mean, there have been slightly more upgrades versus downgrades. So really, there's not been much, uh, really, uh, either on the positive side or on the negative side. I think most of the expectations were fairly well captured. Mm. But one thing which we're tracking closely uh, is the cement space. I think uh, the performance is in line for Q3 but Q4 commentary seems to be much better on pricing environment and that seems to be getting corroborated with what we are hearing at the ground yeah in fact we are hearing there's another price hike coming in tomorrow by the way uh, and that could well uh, take place in south, south region okay and if that goes through the, the ripple effect of that on central eastern and the western regions is far more uh, positive uh, than any other region uh, so if that sustains, I mean, uh, that could be a very, very good lead signal to watch out for. And we've been quite bullish on cement in the last couple of quarters, and I think that hypothesis that we were building out seems to be playing exactly in line. Well, you know, the other interesting one is what happens to Wipro, isn't it? The valuation's never a problem, but yet again, uh, uh, a, th a development that could derail the sentiment a little bit. Uh, PMD with the and CEO, CEO stepping putting, down. Uh, oh, okay. So that is it. Come, yeah, it's just oh, coming this he's, morning. He uh, announced that he's going to step down due to right. family commitment reasons, and we, he will wait on the board till uh, a new MD CEO is appointed. So, you know, this management reshuffle. Do you feel that this can weigh down on, you know? Well, that's been the big challenge with Wipro, yeah. isn't it? I mean, last so many years, they've had transitions. They tried the cohort structures, didn't work out. They got, uh, you know, the TCS uh, person to lead the charge. And I guess uh, there were quite a few initiatives that they take. But I guess uh, unless there's a major sort of an overall of the entire positioning as a brand itself in front of the clients, and ultimately, you know, IT services all said and done is also led at the front end very, very uh, significantly. And that's where TCS and Infosys have done relatively better than what Wipro was able to achieve. The entire move towards digital was probably a little delayed and therefore that cost them a fair amount of growth in the last few years. Okay. Stay on with us, Amit. Uh, you know, we just uh, quickly move on to our special segment, Bloomberg Edge, where Yash Upadhyay tells us about a pattern that the Bloomberg terminal has thrown up on a particular stock. Good morning, Yash. What's the stock today? Morning, Devina. So we're looking at MCX, and there was a big fall in yesterday's day of trade. Uh, the stock closed almost seven, seven and a half percent lower, uh, with volumes too surging below over uh, the five times its 30-day average. And with that, the ADX indicator that has shown uh, a negative signal on the counter and expects this trend to continue going forward. The ADX, as you know, is a directional indicator. It shows you the direction of uh, the securities movement. Uh, it uses today's high price as well as a low price compared to its previous high and low uh, to show basically basically the underlying trend uh, and the strength within that uh, directional movement of the security. Uh, coming back to the price chart of uh, MCX, and we had seen that in in, in the week ahead as well, uh, there was substantial amount of weakness at higher levels around the mark of 1400, which is a strong resistance on the long-term charts for the counter, and it had been slowly and steadily coming off. In fact, if you take a look at the chart, you'll see uh, that five out of the last, uh, four out of the last five trading sessions had ended uh, with losses for the stock, but yesterday's fall was uh, quite severe. It ended 7% uh, lower, and with that, if you see the red line, which is the minus DMI line, that has shot up significantly and has crossed up above the plus DMI line as well. The ADX line, which is the one in white color, that hovers around the mark of 50, 55 to 60, and that is a strong indicator that there is uh, the underlying weakness in the security, and it could reach a low, a further lower levels uh, as far as uh, MCX is concerned. All right, Yash, how well has this worked in the past? Uh, Devina, two out of the last four times uh, that this has been triggered on the daily charts, uh, the average return on a closing basis has been upwards of 16%. 
Okay, we leave it at that, Yash. Thanks very much for that. That's MCX for you. Yesterday's session was down about 7.5%. Uh, I wonder, Devina, there is a bit of a result element to MCX as well since the numbers have come out post market as and whether that uh, disturbs the chart pattern or no is the other question. So people got to probably keep that in mind as well. Yep, yep. Let's also bring in Shubham Angarwal, CEO at Quansap.com. He's joining us right now on the show. Uh, Shubham, thanks very much for taking out the time. Uh, we've got one day to go for the big budget session. On the index, it looks like at least we could see a slight bit of a bounce as per what the SGX is indicating. What would the trade look like? Hi, good morning, Devina. So, uh, firstly, if you look at uh, the Nifty's data, uh, Nifty has one of the lowest rollover in the last 11 months, and uh, that's uh, pretty much in line with what happens uh, before an event. Uh, so, fairly, the correction has already happened on Nifty, and now the market participants are trying to keep the positions low ahead of the event and uh, generally in this kind of a market when we see that uh, the positions are low uh, post the event there's a good possibility that you know if uh, uh, nothing major on the negative side comes in uh, then generally the market should see a mean reversal on the upside uh, so obviously it will be a riskier trade because uh, there's an event lined up ahead uh, but i would expect that uh, the level of 12000 plus minus 50 point should get respected and uh, roughly 11,900 will act as one of the major support and this will see a reversal from here. So overall, the trade on Nifty will be that, you know, now one can look to gradually buy at the current level and if at all a correction does happen to the 12,000 mark, 11,900 will be the stop loss and on the upside, 12,250 to 300 is the target that we expect. Okay. Uh, what about individual stocks? Uh, so on the individual stocks, uh, two uh, names on the buy side, both are from the financial space. So the first one is SDFC Limited. And uh, if you look at the structure there, the long-term structure is still bullish where we have consistently a higher highs getting formed. And recently there was a pullback uh, for the last seven, eight trading sessions, which, is, which has led to actually a continuation pattern kind of a setup on technical analysis. So uh, that's quoting at the lower end of the pattern. And there's a good possibility that we might see a reversal happening. So a 2460 strike call option can be bought on HDFC Limited for a target of 62 rupees with a stop loss at 35. And the second call is a buy call on ICICI Bank. And ICICI Bank has been one of the uh, outperformers from the banking space. And it has been in a consolidation, but uh, some of the studies of squeeze that we track where uh, you know, the data indicates that within the consolidation, there was enough built up that was taking place on ICICI. That has given us comfort on believing that uh, we might soon see a breakout happening on ICICI Bank. So a 540 strike call option can be bought for a target of 21 rupees with a stop loss at 10. Thanks. Uh, Shubham, I want your view on two other stocks, not from the banking space, but more uh, consumer driven. Colgate for one and uh, Jubilant Foodworks, the other, uh, both moved in uh, you know, different directions in yesterday's session. Uh, so uh, on Colgate, if we see, then, you know, there was a one single day last drop and generally it's not there in the books of technical analysis, but uh, I call it a vampire truth where uh, if a single day large correction happens, it's like a bloodbath uh, happening there. And generally, whenever something like this gets developed, uh, that uh, means that a, a reversal has already taken place and any pullback that happens will generally get rolled into. So I, I would just expect that, you know, because the overall sector is still doing well, I wouldn't want to go ahead and take a short trade, but one can just avoid Colgate uh, from a trading perspective. Uh, but Jubilant Food certainly is a better place stock because uh, for the last many days, we have been seeing a long, long unwinding structure on the derivative data, which is indicating that every time a pullback happens, the open interest goes down, uh, which is an indication of a profit booking. A profit booking is completely different than a short trade. So generally, this kind of a setup is more lucrative to go and trade. And uh, yesterday, we saw that a new high uh, was formed and the stock broke out to a new all-time high. So I think Jubilant Food, a long trade can be initiated from a positional standpoint where the 1800 will be the stop loss. And on the upside, I would expect a target of 1900 over the next two weeks. You know, three or four other names that viewers remember you need to watch out for. Uh, strong results from Equitas Holdings. Actually, very strong numbers. So let's wait and watch how this one reacts today. Uh, the other one is Loris Labs, wherein the revenues were up about 37%. Net profit was up four times. And their EBITDA expanded about 68 or 69%. So very strong set of numbers. And lastly, I would watch out for Bharat Electronics. Uh, simply put, with the kind of performance that has come into quarter three, 
down about 16, 17% revenues. The ask rate on quarter four on the revenue front is just so large that I won't be surprised if the management reduces the guidance. The earlier guidance was about 12 to 15%. I won't be surprised if they go ahead and reduce the guidance, the revenue guidance for the year. And maybe just maybe that will not sit too well. Uh, the stock is anyways down 14, 15%. But just keep in mind, it's a very active stock and therefore could see some reactions in the session today as well. And of course, we, we were just speaking about MCX. That's the other one you need to monitor. But you know, some very strong broader end of the spectrum numbers, particularly Equitas and Loras Labs. Expensive stock, but what fabulous results. Yeah, Equitas particularly after G1, there were expectations that Equitas would also follow suit with good numbers. But 37 seconds left to go for market pre-open. Uh, let's quickly just um, you know hop across and see what Asia is doing at this point. A uh, start is strong, uh, still holding on to those early morning gains with Hang Seng losing a bit. It was up about six tenths of a percent now, is up just a hundred odd points. Uh, but holding on to gains and Nikkei 225 also up 1.26 percent for the SGX Nifty. Uh, we've, we've improved a bit, so now up about four tenths of a percent. 12,086 on the SGX and FT. Eight seconds left to go. Watch it for all the biggies that reported numbers yesterday, as well as the ones that we just discussed. Tata Motors is going to remain in focus on what that stock does this morning. Uh, and FT50 opening up, uh, you've got uh, a flattish to a marginally positive move, but these are going to be extremely volatile. Not really. Uh, there's no point in gauging what the index is doing in the first minute, first few minutes of trade in pre-open. Individual stocks too. Vipro takes that big knock post the announcement of the step down of the MD and CEO. Uh, that stock is at 216, but again, don't know whether this will stick. Tata Motors is down 2.26%. JSW Steel down 1.5%. Infosys down 1%. Vedanta, ONGC, Titan, all of them looking uh, flattish to slightly negative. Uh, what's holding out in today's session is Kotak Mahindra Bank, and you would have expected this to happen. This was a big overhang and now it's gone. It's almost on the, on, on the brink of 1800. Uh, talking about an expensive stock getting more expensive. Uh, but like Amit said, uh, there's a preference there. Uh, Bajaj Finsurf, 3.2 watt percent higher this morning. M&M up 1.5%. ITC, HDFC Limited. Indus in Bank, 1.5% higher. SBI ahead of numbers is doing okay, 1.25% higher. Uh, Reliance Industries, 1455. Atara Steel, Britannia, LNT, Axis, Tech Mahindra, a lot of stocks which are trading in the green, a handful of five or six stocks which uh, trade in the red. The currency is at 71.45 now. So, uh, you know, while today there's a marginal amount of strength, there has been significant deterioration in the last uh, month, month and a half. Yeah, I think these reactions on Kotak um, as uh, of 10% uh, uptake or a Wipro might just get, uh, uh, I mean, moderated. It's too soon to uh, figure out, but let's wait and watch. Uh, but frankly, those are the only two stocks which are gaining the most, even at the BSC 500. Uh, but since I have to mention two or three names, I'll just point out uh, one of them being Equitas, which is starting off marginally higher. The other one is Laura Slabs, which is starting off 7 or 8% higher. So, no, that is the other one at the broader end of the spectrum, which is doing well, which is Laura Slabs. So, do watch out. And just lastly, MCX should be pulled up as well. And BEL, the two names. Uh, MCX, the numbers looked okay. Flattish start uh, after the 7% downtick yesterday. And Bharat Electronics likely would have started off lower. Don't quite. Let's pull up that stock and see what that is doing. Yeah, starting off about a percent, percent and a quarter lower. So, not the best of rates for this one. Okay, speaking of earnings, subdued quarter for LIC Housing Finance, asset quality so deterioration on a sequential basis. Herat Shefali Malik in conversation with the company's MD and CEO Siddharth Mohanty. There has been a 13 percent growth in revenue from operations. Our home loan segment that has also shown 16 percent growth. So, despite that growth, there has been a slight increase, 32 basis points in NPA. For that, we have provided 390 crore additional provisioning is there. That's why our uh, uh, profit has been flattish. Okay. Uh, sir, so the second part to the question that I asked, uh, how are your margins, uh, spreads and margins due during the quarter? Did you see um, the same increase during the quarter because of uh, relatively lesser or easier liquidity in the system right now? Yeah, actually there has been also growth. If you see our net interest income, we have shown 18% growth in interest income. 
and the margin also there has been some growth as you can say 2.33 net interest margin this quarter it is 2.42 so there has been uh, some growth in the margin also and if you see cost of fund also there has been some improvement uh, we, it is actually 27 basis point it is less as compared to 8.49 it is now 8.22 percent weighted average cost of fund and incremental cost also there also we have made some improvement by 69 basis points as against 8.56 it is now 7.87 so i feel in the coming days also uh, margin will be steady to further growth will be there in margin okay um, sir your gross npas have inched up by 35 basis points on a sequential basis so where is this pressure coming in from is this from the uh, builder book that these the highest slippages have come in from no actually last quarter we have been somehow able to contain uh, this builder book npi in fact it is a little less as compared to Q2, Q3 Builder Book, it is less. But overall, it has gone up by 32 basis points because some accounts earlier also that was there in the uh, last quarter, some uh, one account NPA, but uh, multiple have been taken into account as per the norm. So that has actually, that segment has increased. And uh, all those things will be within control in the current quarter, last quarter, uh, there will be significant improvement in this area okay so what kind of recoveries are you looking at in any outlook for the rate of slippages going forward is there anything uh, which is at risk right now actually in fact uh, i am hopeful uh, the present uh, npa will be reduced in the last quarter because already a lot of work is being done and uh, we are uh, negotiating with the uh, developers whose accounts are NPS uh, activities are also on some final orders also we are expecting some orders are already there those are to be implemented within uh, February or by last week of March so they are also will make uh, some headway so far as the recovery is concerned so I foresee some improvement uh, in this uh, NPA figure there will be definitely some improvement in the last quarter Sir, in the individual home loan category, how are the asset quality trends currently? Because we've seen for a couple of lenders that there has been, uh, you know, some amount of pain, maybe little, has started emerging as far as the retail loan category is concerned. Not necessarily entirely home loans, but overall uh, consumer products. In asset, if you see individual loan, there has been some increase, but it is not very significant. And within affordable PMY, uh, NPA figure is uh, very, very negligible. And uh, that will, I think, that will help overall NPA position if you take. Uh, uh, this will also help for a total NPA percentage uh, in a reduction. So, of course, there is some increase in individual segment also, but it is not that much uh, material. Okay. Uh, Mr. Monty, just one last question. We are just one day away from the budget and uh, what are the expectations that you have and what according to you should be done uh, to revive the real estate sector and the state of housing finance companies? If you observe, entire uh, year, government has given a lot of uh, incentives to this sector this housing sector, real estate, a lot of incentives, infusing liquidity, tax concession, so many things the government has provided to boost the sector. And I expect in the coming budget, those things will continue because some of the benefits were available up to 31st March 2020, like additional tax incentive, income tax incentive of 1.5 lakh, that is available up to 31st March 2020. So my ex expectation would be that should continue in the next year also. So the other incentives also, those should continue because we have to boost the sector. Mm. Well, that's LIC Housing Finance and uh, a flattish uh, move for post results day. You know? It'll be interesting to see how the stock does uh, in the lead up.
Well, it's unchanged as of now. For now, flattish moves. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, that's LIC housing though at 440. Uh, last few occasions, not done a whole lot much. Nirav Cheda, Senior uh, Derivatives and Technical Analyst at uh, Nirmal Bank Securities is joining us right now. Nirav, a quick call on the index. Uh, we are just about uh, at the end of pre-open. See, uh, index, I believe, uh, you know, the open interest in the index is very low. Uh, as the analyst before me uh, said, you know, it's at uh, the six month lows. Also, this, uh, you know, open interest has been low from the last three, four months itself. So, no one really has positions. I don't think, you know, with no position, there can be a big fall. So, definitely, I don't see a big fall coming. Uh, probably 12,000 or uh, 11,970 would prove to be a good support area on the downside. Uh, whatever fall comes is probably going to come only by tomorrow. And then you will see a linear rally, you know, going forward. Uh, 12,200, 250 can come. So definitely it's a buy and dips kind of a market. I believe one should be buying uh, Nifty if it falls towards the 12,000 odd levels. The stop loss should be 11,900 and uh, you know 12,200, 12,250 can definitely come. Okay, coming back to you for your stocks in a bit, but I mean just one final word. Uh, uh, you know, anything that you're particularly convinced about that you really like, uh, you've spoken about Kotak Mahindra Bank, but there, is there any one or two stocks maybe that could be you know the next big thing to watch out for so we've been backing up alcoholic beverages companies uh, and our argument there was not as much on volume growth but on the uh, premiumizing the portfolio and uh, cost pressures actually peaked out and that's clearly corroborated in the uh, earnings that we saw and we believe that uh, the next 12 to 18 months these names will tend to outperform. Mm -hmm. In fact, you have a possibility of price hikes being allowed by a few states, especially state of Karnataka, which is a very large uh, sort of a portfolio presence in uh, quite a few companies, so especially for USL. Uh, so that's what we are backing up uh, as, a, as a theme for the next uh, year, year and a half. And uh, while Redico is a relating story based on premi premiumization of the portfolio, USL has displayed uh, amazing cost management. And mm. uh, if the volumes were to come back, the operating leverage will just show up in a lot of these names. All right, Amit, we'll let you go on that note. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. Amit Kurana there of Dalat Capital. Uh, quick uh, uh, few seconds, Nira, for your stock ideas. Yeah, see, uh, LNT has been moving in a range on the downside about 1270 uh, is a you know a good support area and on the upside around the 1600 odd levels always faces resistance. So it hit uh, the 1270 odd levels uh, in the uh, last few weeks and has since you know come up. The open interest has turned positive, which was negative earlier, which is quite you know encouraging. Uh, I believe it is likely to move up towards the 1400, 1420 odd levels. So definitely buy this stock at current levels uh, with a stop loss of around uh, 1345 on the futures and a possible target of around uh, 1410. The second stock is a buy on PFC. You know, PFC uh, has been very, very good uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the rebound that it saw. Uh, it had hit, uh, it had broken an important level of about 105, uh, sorry, 110 and then, you know, uh, going down uh, took very good volumes to come up uh, the open interest from negative you know it was short uh, in the last month that has changed to positive uh, in the second half of the month and that is a very good sign it is above the 50 and 200 day moving averages that means it is likely to move up further i believe this stock can be bought for a target of around 125 the possible stop loss can be 105 uh, 115 on the futures Minutes from market open as well. Let's quickly tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade today. The RBI of uh, India and Kotak Bank have reached a peace pact. Uday Kotak now gets six months to cut its stake by 3% to 26%. Operational performance of Tata Motors was muted despite cost efficiency measures yielding some results. Amongst earnings reported after market hours, Marico, Bharat Electronics and JK Tires reported a weak set of numbers. Um, while MCX and Equitas Holdings saw a strong quarter. Vipro's MD and CEO... Abidali Nimachwala will step down due to family commitments. He will continue to hold office till a new successor is appointed. Madhasan Sumi will demerge its domestic wiring harness business. The new company will have a mirror shareholding. And Nifty companies like SBI, HUL, ITC and Vedanta will be reporting their numbers today. We'll be watch out for all of these uh, as well. Um, um, you know, the other... Uh, Shubham, the stock, the other stock to monitor in the session today could well be Vipro. It's not started off too badly, just about a percent. But is there a trade in the offing here? 
so Wipro Neeraj has been underperforming from the overall IT pack. So I don't know if uh, it will be a good idea to go ahead and buy an underperformer. So I would just avoid it for now. Avoiding Wipro for now. Uh, what would you do with, uh, you know, uh, the likes of an Inox Leisure or a PVR for that matter? Inox is hovering around that 409, 410 mark for a few days now. Uh, so within both the stocks, I think Divina PVR is better placed. And uh, if we uh, see the stock setup, it is again at an all-time high. And this is happening after the three days consolidation, which can be termed as a continuation pattern. So a very good setup and on the derivative data we have longs also getting built uh, every time uh, it has been pulling back. Uh, so PVR is a buy. We can keep our stop loss around uh, 1960 mm -hmm. and on the upside we would expect a target of 2040. All right. 10 seconds, Shubham, your top call for the day. Uh, Asian pain, the target will be 1855 and the stop loss can be maintained at 1780. 10 seconds to you too. What's your top call? Nirav, your top call for the day. Oh, yeah, sorry. I, uh, you know, uh, the earpiece is not very uh, uh, audible. Uh, uh, can you just repeat it, please? We'll, we'll ask you for your top call post-market open, Nirav. Just stay on. Um, and uh, Shubham, stay on as well. Would want your opening thoughts. But <clears throat> here's how the markets are starting off. Half a percent higher. The Nifty 50, about 58 uh, odd points. The Sensex, 194 points. The Bank Nifty, no doubt aided by Kotak Bank, is up about 321 odd points. We'll quickly get to the individual components, but the mid-cap and the small-cap indices should come up on your screen as well. Starting off, okay, the last two days, the mid-caps and the small-caps have underperformed the large-caps. For now, it's in the green, let's wait and watch. But the bank nifty, the clear star, and get the heat map up. I want to see what Kotak Bank is up to. Well, about 4.5%. Mind you, it's not just that alone. Others, I mean, Yes Bank, Indusim Bank, State Bank of India, ahead of the numbers, are also perking up and therefore giving that bit of support to the bank nifty in the session. But Kotak Bank, clearly the star. 4.5% higher. It's a large move. <clears throat> Gets the stock back to near 1,700 odd levels. So a good start to Kotak Bank. Z Entertainment is the other one which is starting off well. Hero Motor Corp about a percent. Bharti Airtel up another percent uh, for itself. Adani Ports is up about a percent. And Nestle too is in the green. Bajaj Finance incidentally up another 0.6 percent. So the juggernaut continues. It was a flat day yesterday but still continues to move up. But a lot of green, very little red. Just about 10 stocks or 11 stocks in the red. 39 in the green. And the ones in the red <coughs> include a power grid 2.5 percent lower. Uh, ahead of the numbers, Wipro, a uh, 2% lower, HCL Tech, about a percent lower, uh, and ONGC is up about a percent uh, lower. So some of these PSUs, because of the CPC ETF also being on, could also be in focus, not necessarily uh, have a fundamental reaction, but could be in focus. But Wipro, clearly the big loser, a 2% lower, and Kotec Bank, 5% have been the top gainer. And those are the stocks, frankly, that I would want to point out, even in terms of the key names that I would want to keep an eye out for. So Wipro and Kotak Bank stand out from the large cap space and therefore deserve a separate mention too. These are the stocks which are in news today from the large cap end. And from the broader end of the spectrum, two or three results which I thought stood out and should come up on your screen. All of these had strong numbers. So Equitas, about a couple of percentage points, nothing too dramatic, but starts off two percentage points higher. A lot of slabs, expensive stock up about a percent. And MCX, uh, flattish, uh, just about a percent or nearly a percent in the green. Maybe now what are you spotting? Well, aside from the names you already mentioned, you had uh, Amber Enterprises, not comparable on a YOY basis, but nonetheless, EBITDA, uh, everything moved up. You have uh, margins that came in higher as well at 6.9%, 8% higher for an Amber Enterprises. Uh, JK Tire, uh, that reported margins that were higher, though EBITDA came off a bit, 7.9% lower, uh, I mean, the dip of 7.9%. And then you've got uh, the likes of a Bharat Electronics persistent system. Bharat Electronics weak quarter, the stocks are down about three odd percent persistent system. <clears throat> Revenues were up 4.3 percent, net profit was up about 2.2 percent. A flattish move on the stock. Uh, aside from that, uh, Walkhard continues to do well, and this one now for the last seven days has gone up 30 percent. That is a really strong move that's come in on the stock. Uh, India Bulls real estate is up 4.5% today. Vodafone is up 3.8%. Uh, JBF Industries, that's up. A smaller name, but it's up 4%. E-Clerks 
at 658 is up 5 percent uh, you've got uh, prestigious states which is also doing okay for itself though the last one week has not done a whole lot much but today is kicking in uh, Godfrey Phillips 2 percent higher Gujarat Gas United Bank Narayana Rudalia that's moved up to a uh, Yuko Bank um, the likes of a central bank of india most of the psu banks are okay for themselves dlf is up 1.3 percent as well karu vaisya bank is uh, uh, you know some of the other movers in trade today on the losing end uh, you've got uh, obviously we bharat electronics in the numbers jk is in the numbers but moil is down gayatri projects is down uh, lic housing finance is down you've got hdil mothers and sumi on the demerge uh, on the uh, you know Reorganization of the business is down 1.5%. Uh, Tata Motors DVR is down. Oil India, Strides Pharma are some of the other losers in trade this morning. 800 stocks advance. You've got 364 stocks dipping in trade today. So uh, the breath is more positive at the start of the trading session. Neera, we missed taking your top stock call for the day. Uh, if you could highlight that for us. Yeah. See, uh, you know, there are two stocks, uh, DV's Lab and TVS Motors. I just looked at the rollovers, you know, some time back. Uh, the rollovers uh, seem to be on the lower side. That means the shorts, you know, have exited the position, at least from the TVS uh, Motors uh, stock. And looks like now it can uh, really move up towards the 500, 510 level. So definitely this is a buy with a stop loss of 465. Uh, uh, I'll uh, you know that is on the futures. Uh, also, the target should be around the 500 odd levels. Uh, uh, DV's lab, uh, I believe, uh, is uh, in a linear trend and will continue to move up. Some longs will get added uh, in the stock. So definitely, you know, you can buy the stock with a stop loss of 1940 uh, and a possible target of around 2030. Right. Shubham, quick opening thoughts on the Bank Nifty or Kotak Bank because those are the standout performers. Uh, so Kotak Bank has opened uh, fairly with a gap, so I think uh, it might uh, be too late to go and participate immediately. We might wait for a pullback for uh, that to participate. Uh, but I think with that, uh, most of the other private banking names should also start uh, witnessing traction. And uh, today in the morning, we spoke about ICSA Bank, and I think the next bank uh, that we can buy would be Axis, uh, where uh, the consolidation has been there for fairly quite a good amount of time. And uh, we expect that a <clears throat> pullback or a reversal should now happen. So Axis Bank is a buy, 730 will be the stop loss and 755 is the target that we can look for a one to two days perspective. Okay, we will watch out for these names as well. Um, um, thanks a lot, uh, gentlemen, for joining in and giving us your thoughts. Really appreciate your time. Well, Dhananja Sinha, Director and Head of Institutional Research at Systematics Group, joins us right now on the show. Dhananja, good having you. Thanks much for taking the time out and speaking to us. Can you hear me, Dhananja? Thank you. Good morning. Oh, yeah, you can. Good morning. Yeah, yeah so, I can. Great. Dhananjay, what's your sense? How are we placed ahead of the budget? Do you think if Good the budget morning. is a non-event, uh, we will continue the move upwards or could there be a pause? So I think uh, a budget is something everybody is waiting for. But uh, my sense is that uh, you know the, the, the substance of the budget is con significantly removed with the GST there. So I think what is relevant from a budget standpoint is the a way the government uh, wants to emphasize on the uh, policies and especially with respect to allocation when the when the economy requires a certain demand stimulus people are looking at uh, especially on the rural side how the allocation uh, will happen across various programs so i think uh, you know, whether there is a stimulus or not is something that they will they will be uh, looking for i mean there are expectations of certain uh, uh, tax reliefs on the income side but you know we'll see how it happens uh, broadly i would say uh, it won't be a significant Im Im uh, event beyond uh, giving us some sense of how the allocations and the uh, will happen and what is the emphasis of the government um, i think from a market standpoint i think there has been a significant rally over the last uh, uh, three four months uh, and especially uh, there it has actually permeated to the broader market as well so you see now some of the large mid cap names have also actually done well uh, you know where we are today i think people are somewhat concerned about what is happening with respect to the corona virus uh, that is playing out uh, in china and there are concerns uh, especially uh, for 
for the commodity pack, especially the uh, metal segment, there has been that has shown a significant rally since November or even uh, I would say October. So that uh, is tapering off. There is some some uh, correction that is happening on the banking stocks as well. So I think uh, that is how it is set up now. But broadly, I would say uh, I am more constructive. Depending on how this uh, this coronavirus thing plays out, uh, let's say it 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 is it is a concern for a quarter. But broadly, I would say uh, I mean this year is going to be a positive year uh, uh, if the if the if the coronavirus is not such a devastating event. So. Well, That's how I look at it. Fingers crossed for that, uh, both on markets front as well as on the humane front. But with a presumption that we don't quite know how it will shape up, would you believe that the bets would largely be placed at the current point of time on domestic-oriented right. themes as opposed to export-oriented themes? Yeah, I think people will switch. Uh, so I think uh, you know a lot of metal names and uh, have, have actually done well, and you know. IT has also rallied somewhere around uh, around uh, December, uh, and uh, so I think uh, people might want to focus a lot on domestic plays. You are absolutely right. There is a certain uh, amount of, uh, I mean, a marginal improvement uh, in the agri sector as we've seen uh, results from escorts uh, and some of the rural plays. Uh, some of the agri plays are actually showing better uh, better uh, uh, sort of trajectory. It has not really permeated into a broader rural theme. Uh, that will depend on how the government allocates. But uh, the emphasis uh, clearly will be how the domestic demand pans out. It might require the government to exceed uh, the uh, the fiscal deficit numbers and stuff. But I think that's where the government will move towards. So I think uh, you're right. Actually, the focus will be a lot on how the domestic uh, demand pans out uh, across consumption space, uh, especially. Okay. Uh, what have you made of the developments within uh, the consumption space, Dhananjay, this time around in, in the new team? Uh, how are you viewing uh, the results that have come out from the FMCG space? Volume growth has, well, been a chalk and cheese for most players this time around. Right, 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 right. So it's been, it's been very varied. It's not very uh, sort of, it's a mixed bag. Uh, you know, Dabur has been a, a been a good uh, good uh, performance. Whereas other companies, you know, Colgate, for instance, has not been uh, so strong. So commentary generally has been somewhat uh, you know somewhat uh, weakish to moderate. So there is uh, people have not really uh, been very vocal about a, a very strong growth going forward. Whereas we see that with respect to escorts, uh, the commentary is somewhat more positive. Uh, so I would say broadly, I would say uh, that uh, there is an increase in competitive pressure that people are talking about. People who have been able to invest a lot in in creating a rural uh, network and 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 uh, and they have the right kind of uh, marketing stra marketing strategy. They have been able to gain market share. Um, so I think it is at a at an inflection point of a moderate recovery going forward. If you look at the 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 set of uh, results that has been uh, announced. Uh, uh, FMCG pack has been somewhat on the moderate side. Uh, more agriculture-oriented uh, uh, space is somewhat more positive. Um, so I, I guess going forward, it will uh, translate into better, uh, better demand and volume growth going forward. Uh, as, as, as I've mentioned earlier, we'll see how the government spends. There is uh, the, what, what I've been emphasizing also is that there is a sort of a improvement in the terms of trade for the agri sector. So the relative price for the agriculture produce is somewhat better than the non-agriculture -agri produce prices as is reflected in the inflation numbers. So I think that at the margin is actually impacting the rural demand through the, through the agri, uh, agriculture sector dynamics. So uh, I think that so I'm, I'm somewhat more constructive uh, beyond the weakish situation that we have seen uh, over the previous uh, three, four quarters. Well, we certainly hope so. So hope some of these things shape up uh, as well. But we are out of time completely on this conversation. But Dhananjay, congratulations on your new role and all the best. And look forward to have you more often. Thank you. That's the view from Thank Dhananjay Sinha of Systematics Group. Uh, on the note that the markets are trading reasonably okay with the bank nifty uh, proving to be that supportive role, 286 points in the green, up about a percent uh, for the bank nifty. We need to slip into a break, but we 
come out of the break and talk about the market and economic expectations from the budget 2020 with Suhas Hari Narayanan of JM Financial Institutional Securities and Tanvi Gupta Jain, India economist at UBS.